Hey, I'm Laura. Welcome to Undistracted. This is a place where we learn from our guests how we can be better at building our lives with intention around our passions and around our purpose and deal with some of the stuff that can get in the way of that. Today, we're hearing from Taya. You might know her as one of the vocalists in Hillsong United, but she's also just ventured out as a solo artist. So we're talking about her first solo album, some of her hopes and dreams for it, the difficulties of bringing it together, songwriting over Zoom, the anxiety and nervousness that she felt at times, but also the great clarity she felt from the Holy Spirit about what this project was meant to look like. I think you're really gonna enjoy it as we all learn how we can find those moments of clarity in the confusing aspects of life, but also bring to life these things, these passions within us that may not have found an outlet just yet. So I hope you enjoy that part of it. Wherever you're watching from, make sure that you hit like, subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss these videos. And of course, make sure you find the podcast Undistracted with Laura Bennett, wherever you listen to your podcasts. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy it. Well, Taya, thank you so much for joining us on Undistracted. Really appreciate it. Oh, of course, Laura. It's always lovely to see you and thank you for having me. Of course, because you are someone who has just been, I feel like one of the busy, productive people in these last couple of years working on your debut solo album, which I feel like has been a long time coming. If I look at what some of your friends are saying on you know, social media and everything, this has been a passion project of yours for a long time. How have you got yourself to the point where you're now releasing your own music? Yeah, I mean, you're very kind. I feel like, I mean, the way that I would describe it is that I would call myself a worker bee, um, someone who's happy to come alongside and work really hard, but I'm not necessarily the CEO type that's, you know, the driving force and like, yes, let's go this way. So even though it, it kind of seems like it was coming, you know, for a long time, I was probably the most reluctant person for sure. Mm. And so there were only many times where I was like, Lord, if this is you and if this is what you want me to do, I'm going to need you to speak to me about this, which the crazy thing is, is when you um, take the time and you make the space and you ask God, you know, we have, we have an amazing God who isn't deaf and he, you know, he, he doesn't, he speaks like it, it's, it's, it's beautiful and it's it's also wild when it happens because then the onus is on us to then <laughs> steward that and be obedient to that. So to be honest, it was a long time coming. I didn't write, um, you know, for a really long time. I felt it was something that I was meant to be doing, but it's, um, I would, the best way to describe it is the parable um, in the Bible when it talks about um, a, a a king or a master giving all these talents, these um, little money bags to these um, servants. And he was going away on a trip and he's like, I'm going to come back and I want to see what you do with these things. Mm. And, um, you know, the one who got given five, he doubled it. The one who got given two, he doubled it. And so when the master came back, he was really pleased with that. But the person who had been given one talent was so afraid because he said, I knew that you were a hard man. And so I was so nervous. So I just buried it. But mm. I've, I've, I've dug it back up and I've, here you go. And he said, how silly of you. You should have put it in a bank. At least it could have gotten interest. And then he kind of said the crazy thing of like, and now I'm going to put you where the gnashing of teeth is, which I'm pretty sure that's a definition of hell. Mm. God is not. And um, so I feel like I've had this holy fear of going, I know that you've put something in my hand, Lord, but I haven't been a good steward of it for um I guess the easiest way to describe it would be, and I got this from Jad because he spoke at one of our team nights when we were gathering together end of 2019. And I felt like it hit home. He said, it's actually um, fake humility, which is pride. Mm. That you're not willing to show um, your songs to people that you're not willing to um, kind of be up to be uncomfortable, to be up to, you know, allow people to come alongside and help you get better it's actually pride. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's, <laughs> not, that's what I've done because I've cared more about, and I haven't even shown anyone. And yet I've cared more about people's opinions. And mm. that's a way that I don't believe I'm called to live nor in other areas. Do I live that way? So why would I 
bow out before I've even had a chance to show people like, Hey, I think I'm meant to be writing songs. Like, mm. and, um, I don't know. I've God's kind. And, and he definitely, you know, when he says like, this is the season go, um, I'm, you know, made the space to ask him and I feel like he spoke to me. And then he also reassured me that that was actually the word that he said, you know, I was mm. at our last gathering is as a church before the world shut down in 2020. And, um, and I said, God, I need you to speak to me. I know that we had set aside, this is what's crazy. We had set aside six months at the top of 2020. Um, but we'd set that aside, you know, in 2019 before we knew what was going to unfold in the world. And um, I knew it was coming up and I said, I need you to speak to me, God. Otherwise I don't want to do this. I can't. Mm. And so <laughs> reluctant over here, very. <laughs> and so, um, you know, there was a, a moment at one of our conferences, I put on an eye mask. It was a gift moment of our women's conference. And it just said awakening, which is kind of prophetic and profound and sat there for 20 minutes. And I said, God, I'm not going to take this mask off until you speak to me because I, I need something from you and I don't want to go without your presence. Hmm. And it felt like you said, the words like honey, that this project is to be like honey. It's to be easy to digest, simple, um, and honey has healing qualities. So as it goes down, perhaps, you know, maybe people aren't even aware of it at the time, but it would heal some deep things on the inside wounds that maybe people didn't know needed tending to. And so it was kind of, I knew it wasn't the, the name of the album. I knew it wasn't um, a song. It was just meant to be a word from God for me to keep coming back to, to keep going. You know, if, if anything felt like, oh, like, um, you know, I was learning how to co-write. I was, I mm. was trying to figure out the right songs and even the right people to have involved. And if anything felt like that, I just came back to the words like honey and, and don't get me wrong. Like those many, sh- like the whole thing was, <laughs> the whole thing was like, Oh my lantern, what am I doing? Jesus. Um, but he was kind. And I just kept going back to that word that no, I meant to go with the honey, like remember the honey mm. and um, kindness of God. He just, that day that I heard that word, even though I was like, am I hungry? And I love sugar. Like God speaks in the language. <laughs> yeah. He, he literally, my husband came home. He'd been in the Hunter Valley, which um, he said he got me a present. And I thought it was a completely, you know, different kind of present. You know, I thought it was like a beautiful bottle of wine, like thinking, cause that's, you know, wine country. Mm. And um, I, I saw this thing, got you a gift and thought of you. So here it is. And I opened the brown paper bag as I was literally in bed looking at these words and it was a jar of honey. Aww. So I said, okay, God, I heard you, which is, that's probably the thing that I've probably celebrated and just been so grateful for the most. Sure. And an album is, is actually beautiful. It's, it's like a child of some sorts, you know, learning mm. how to birth into the world. Um, but to be honest, to hear the voice of the Lord has been the sweetest for lack of a better term, yeah. thing this whole season. So yeah, it's it's just so special because it's so personal and so unique to what you're doing. But it it might be kind of intriguing to some people to think that you were hesitant or really maybe nervous to release these songs because you've sung in front of millions of people. You've you know your your voice and songs that you sing have gone around the world. Why was this something that you were maybe a little bit more reluctant to share and to do? Well, I. I think, I mean, I've, I've, I mean, it does sound crazy when, when you say like that, because it's like, I've had the most amazing opportunity of watching God do something that's far beyond anything I could think, ask or imagine. And, you know, I'm so grateful for the stewarding of other people's songs as well. Like I, I've watched people write and maybe I, I watched people write and it, and I saw the sacrifice. Maybe, maybe I saw how much it cost. Um, when people are truly doing it to like honor God, and they have a revelation of who He is, so they're like, "I'm not going to give Him my second best. Like He deserves my absolute best." And mm. to get it there, perhaps I saw what that cost. But I don't know. I, I think as well, it's just this whole other vulnerable new space of because it's your own words mm. it's, it's your own revelation of who Jesus like is to me and and with my own melodies as well which I just think you know um it was it was songs that 
didn't sound like other people's songs either, which maybe I was a little bit nervous of that because I'm like, oh, my songs are so different. Like I use different <laughs> chords and, and it's, and because I've never um, co-written before, mm. tr- truly like successfully where I've, you know, felt comfortable enough to give, give my opinion and let it sit there and people either take it or they don't. Like it was just a whole other learning experience. But what I have come to know, even more so over the last, you know, two years, but even the last couple of months, is that God's timing is perfect. Mm. It may not be our timing, but his timing is perfect and hindsight will later on tell us, wow, God, there was far more here than meets the eye and you were working and doing stuff that I had no idea about. So, um, and, and to be honest, like the other amazing thing was the community that I have around me. Um, a local church and people who love me and, you know, who I'm accountable to and, and hold me as well. Like knowing like, Hey, you got to be obedient to what God tells you. And, and, and they had said, you know, this is going to be something someone had kind of given this sweet word of encouragement that you're not going to have to force this. It's going to be in God's perfect timing. And he's going to bring the right people around you to be able to bring out the thing that God's put in your heart to do. Mm. I've just watched god do that like you know from the first i I co-wrote with a few different people still trying to find my feet and what is wild is that i started writing this album on zoom (laughs) yeah which most people will be like oh how horrible like i couldn't you know do it but i didn't know any different the mute button was a true gift it enabled me to just you know it was in my it was in my like one bedroom rental apartment with my husband Mm. He was, you know, in the building construction world, so he was still able to go to work and I was there at home and I had the mute button on and I would play at my piano. And then because I'm writing with people across the world that I don't really know, mm. so I was, uh, what do you think about this? And just like play a little bit, you know. So again, God is, um, I mean, something that someone said to me, like I think it was back in end of 2012, um, I just sung Oceans in the studio, didn't know it was going to be on an album or anything. And a friend said to me, don't box God. Mm. Have you thought about ministry? I said, no, I love church. I do it, you know, not as a job or anything. And she said, just don't box God. Just because it looks like this for that person doesn't mean it has to look like that for you. Yeah. And I would say on the Zoom side of things, like don't box God. You know, he can he can use a donkey, he can use me and he'll he can use me in the most crazy just different ways like he just yeah in hindsight he knows best yeah and let's talk about his timing for a second because when you first moved to Sydney back in 2010 you were coming to pursue music and I think maybe what you imagined it to look like then is probably quite different to what it has looked like over the last what 12 years so what what did you imagine your career looking like when you made that move Yeah. Well, I love that you said that because that's what I told my parents at 21 when I left home. I said, I'm going to Sydney to become a signed recording artist, which, you know, then I started working in retail because I didn't, again, I'm the worker bee. I'm not the CEO type. I just was like, ah, I don't really know what that means or how to do it. Um, I definitely thought it was going to be secular music just because, again, um, well, I mean, I'm speaking to an Australian, like, you know, I'm... P.S. I'm so thankful for Hope 103.2 because (laughs) I didn't grow up with Christian radio. Mm. Like, you know, it was just the top 40. And so it wasn't even, it wasn't, I wasn't even aware that, you know, that you could be a Christian singer. Like I was just like, Mm. you're just a singer. Like you just sing whatever songs. And in my heart, I just made the decision, everything that I sing, whether it says the name of Jesus or not, it's going to be praise and it's going to be in worship and in response to God. And I believe he can you know, speak through that to people. It doesn't necessarily have to be within a church or within any other box again. Yeah. Um, but I definitely thought it was going to be, you know, just in secular music. And so, you know, kind of the pinnacle moment for me, which I'm sure, I'm sure we've talked about before, like I, sign, I signed up for The Voice and I got up to the audition just before being on TV and, you know, I played them my original I sang all the songs they wanted like I dressed up did the whole thing you know like cool old school jumper I think it was like my mom (laughs) it's like high heels I was like this is my chance they said we love it um you've nailed it we'll call you in two weeks and then 
you know, I prayed a prayer because I freaked out if everything was going to change. Uh, I said, God, if this is what you want me to do, open the door. If it's not, shut it. And it was, I think, a week later, you know, I got the text from Michael Guy Chislett, who's United's producer and guitarist, and said, hey, would you like to come in the studio to um, record, you know, backing vocals on the latest United project? And lo and behold, I'd been given a week off work. I tried to fly home. It was too expensive. I tried to take another week, but they said, no, you have to take that week. And that's when I was working in retail. And so the rest is kind of history. I said I could make it. I rocked in, sung it. But then obviously, um, you know, that, that, that same week, sorry, not obviously, but that same week I also was asked to go and lead worship at one of our other campuses, you know, on the Friday night for the youth ministry. Then I started co-leading within big church and I had never done that. And that was all within one week. And I mm. felt like, like, Hey, this is the direction, not this. And so I've just kind of, kind of ever since then have just been heeding the, the sweet voice of the Holy spirit. And usually God speaks through our circumstances like it's not always I wish I've I've never heard the audible voice. It's always been an impression. It's always mm. been like this is, you know, like honey. And I'm just like kind of writing out going, ah, oh. but then he's so kind. He will, you know, he knows us better than we know ourselves. He'll confirm it in the way that will speak to us, you know, very obviously. Um, and so it's yeah, it's it's clear that God <laughs> has said this is the direction. Mm. Um and what was really sweet, again, you know, God is, he's a God of detail. And um, I mean, we're created in his image and I love detail. So I'm like, oh, I got this from somewhere. Um, just before we left to, as my husband and I now live in America, which was shocking to us as well, because we're the most Australian people. <laughs> Who knows how long it's going to be? So we moved yeah. here in January. But just before um, I left Sydney to come to America on Christmas Eve, Last year, I got to sign my recording contract, the first one with uh, CCMG, which is the Christian arm of Capital and Universal Music Group. And um, I got to call my parents and say, hey, mom and dad, I did it. I became <laughs> a recording artist. So it's it's been a very sweet time. Yeah, that's a long time. It is genuinely then a long time coming. And a, a, a time I would imagine would involve a little bit of patience in the mix there as well. But was was it easy for you to give up what you thought it might all look like to go instead in that direction that you felt God was leading you? Or was it difficult? Um no, I I mean, God always has the better way. Always. And, you know, if we're faithful with what He's put in our hands in that moment, that's all He's asking of us. I know that I'm not promised tomorrow. I don't even know what the next, well, technically I do because I've got a calendar, so I know what the <laughs> next is, but what it will actually look like, you know, say, for example, writing and um, stewarding a project, my job is to, to the best of my ability, work as if I'm working unto the Lord in mm. every single thing that I get to do. And, you know, it's not perfection, but it's excellence because God is so worthy of everything that I would ever put my hand to. And so I'm doing it unto him. And so I'm going to do the best job that I can. But when it comes to the release, which is kind of, you know, the season that I'm in now where I've got two singles out and I'm just like, ah, like Lord results and how you use it to impact people. Like this mm. is, God's, this is God's territory. And, and if I was to there, you know, freak out, you know, cause I've never done this before. I didn't even know, like, numbers and stuff like I'm mm. looking at things like, oh thank you Jesus but n not once do I want to look at it and go oh, you know freak out all of, of about results or anything my mm. job was again just to be a good steward and to do what it was that I feel the Lord was calling me to even in this season so to be honest that way everything is such a lovely surprise mm. God chooses to use it one way you're like wow this is amazing and I would just say that um that same principle applies to my own life. Like however God wants to use me, I'm down for that because his way, and again, I have, you know, my past to kind of remind me, mm. you know, even in, in my marriage with 
my husband, Ben, he is God's kindness to me in physical form. I'm not even kidding. He is um, such a gift. And if I had had my way, it would have been somebody else. Hmm. But now looking at what we get to steward together, you know, he called this his album, like our album yeah. about six months ago. And I was just like, oh, my gosh, I love you so much. <laughs> like just kindness of God that we're in this together. And mm. and if my life has taught me anything, it's God has a better way. It's probably not going to be what I'm thinking, but he just is, he's just better. And yeah. I don't know, God's way, his, when he says that something's good, because he always talks about that you know, in the old Testament, like he created something. He said, it is good. What I've learned is that his good is better than my most excellent, perfect, beautiful way of, you know, something ending up. Mm. So I've learned to go, you know what? My life is not my own. God has done a way better job with the slim pickings that he had in me. And so <laughs> I, that. <laughs> I don't know about slim pickings. I feel like you have a, a lot to offer and it. it's going to be really cool for people to hear music from you in another way with these first couple of singles. But people, of course, enjoy what you write. And there is, I suppose, a fame element attached to putting yourself out there like this. How do you deal with that side of what you do, essentially being famous for directing people's attention to somebody else? Yeah. I mean, I will say it's, it's very funny just because you know, I don't really, can you really have a Christian celebrity? Probably not because exactly what you said, our job is to go, hey, hey, look at me. So you can look at him, like deflect everything to Jesus. Because that's what a worship leader is to arrest people's attention and then place it. Hey, we're going this way and we're looking up. We're looking at Jesus. Like that's the job of a worship leader. So it kind of, it makes me like just laugh a little bit because I know who I am. And I know who I'm not. And I know that if I didn't have the presence of God with me, if I wasn't anointed, like um, I, a, a, an amazing book that I read um, in 2020 as I was, you know, writing and stewarding this album all on Zoom that entire year it, up until May 2021 when I got this crazy opportunity to then write in person, which was like, oh, what's this? <laughs> <I've> never- <laughs> um, it's, you know, I was reading this book by Melody Green about her husband, Keith Green, and it's called No Compromise. And it's the life and story of Keith Green, who, you know, his music uh, when I was growing up was just, um, it left such an indelible mark of someone who loved God. And anyway, I highly recommend people to read it. And I was telling you all of that because he wrote really honestly, um, just for those who who haven't heard of his story, he actually passed away tragically when he was, I think it was 28 years old. Mm. Um, But he did so many things when he, you know, from when he got saved at 21 to when he passed away to the point where, again, you know, I'm, I believe I'm part of his fruit and his legacy of his life and the way that he loved Jesus so beautifully and him and his wife and um, the family that was left behind after they had this tragic accident happen. Um, she included melody included um journal entries of keith's and he just said lord if your presence if i don't feel your presence if your presence doesn't go with me if i don't know that you've anointed me to go and lead or to sing then i don't want this i Mm. cannot do this without you like and he would sit under a piano weeping like god like please come like just like inhabit the praises of your people and it's kind of um i kind of resonate with with that with that prayer and that, you know, just like, oh, you know. So when I say like, I know who I'm not, I know that, you know, without the Lord showing up, it's, what does it say in Psalms? It's just the sound of a, a you know, a clanging gong, it's, mm. it, which is not pleasant at all. <laughs> no. not, there's not much pitch, like it doesn't sound pretty. Like, so it's, it's just a realization um, of how much I need God and, and then, you know, I feel like the more that I do this, the the desire, but also the need to be in his presence more often than not just continues to increase. Because again, you know, you get an amazing opportunity. And if for one second I thought I could do this on my own, I think instantly it's like, boom, mm. no, absolutely not. Mm. And that sense of identity is, is really important, I think, for all of us in whatever we're, we're doing. But in this project, you've got the chance to not only 
as you've done in the past, sing other people's songs, as you've mentioned, and put voice to other people's melodies. You're getting to sing songs, lyrics, all of it that are your own. What is it about yourself maybe that you want people to know in this that they haven't seen of you before? Oh, wow. Um, I think the easiest way that I could describe this album is even though I wasn't writing for seven years, like, you know, having the maybe the courage to bring, you know, my expression of who Jesus was, when I started writing for this project, it felt like I was just undoing the tap. And it, and it was like, you know, it wasn't just seven years worth of, because just because I wasn't writing doesn't mean that I wasn't journaling and having my devotional time with, I call it my JC time every single yeah. day. <laughs> Because I was, because I was still leading, life still happened. Hmm. It just felt like this sweet moment where the tap was just turned on and it just kind of poured out. And um, to be honest, it's some of them are revelations of, of things that I had um, heard or read that I just couldn't get out of my spirit. And I felt like perhaps the Lord just let it marinate in my heart for a little bit longer than maybe... Um, I don't know, just spitting something out that was maybe half mediocre, but maybe he wanted me to sit in a little bit more or research a little bit more. And, you know, a lot of, um, I love stories. Uh, I grew up just loving, just hearing, you know, if you could tell me a testimony or a story, which is, to be honest, I grew up in a small, small church and every Sunday we just, you know, there was always a testimony time and someone mm. would get up and they'd say, you know, they're from a poor family and they've got three kids and they're just like, and I, wa- I walked past, it was like this Payless shoes. It was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Good like, on Payless. Yes, you know. And and it's like, and um, I had to get the kids school shoes, but we didn't have the budget. And I walked past and I'd been praying, Lord, if you could just help us get these shoes. And I looked and it said, you know, buy one pair, get two free. And then we all just say, praise the Lord. And we just celebrate so I grew up um, loving stories. And so, to be honest, a whole bunch of these songs have just come from stories. For example, um, I got to reconnect um, also at that women's conference that I heard um, the Lord, you know, Im- impressed by my heart, the words for this album, Like Honey. Um, I got to reconnect with my year six um, teacher, primary school teacher, and just got to see how the Lord through our worship music had um, just lifted some things off her life. And she just was radiating the love of Jesus in a way that I um, hadn't recognized when I was younger. And um, we reconnected and we got each other's phone numbers, my, me and my whole family. And we just kind of, you know, just encouraging each other. And then tragically during 2020, she lost her son mm. through an accident at work and um, and she reached out and um, I wrote one of the songs for her and it's wow. called Glory Hallelujah. And, um, and it's kind of, you know, what our response is as Christians. Um, I wish I could say that being a Christian means that you are afforded a life of no pain, but, you know, it says in the Bible, um, you will have, you will have trouble in this world, but take heart for I've overcome it. And so, as a Christian, our response should have a hopeful expectation, Mm. but it, that doesn't mean it doesn't negate the honesty of life here on earth right now. I feel like we're all learning that (laughs) very tangibly. Um, And yet what is our confession as people of faith? And, and so, you know, I wrote a song for Mrs. Ferry and I pray that it is a bomb Mm. and that, and that it would, that that one would be like honey for her and for her family. And and I could tell you, you know, the last song on the album, it's called, oh, I'm just giving you like all secrets today. (laughs) (laughs) Don't tell anyone, guys. Um, It's called Sorry to Grieve You, God. And it came from a one-page lament that during 2020, um, it was actually the week that George Floyd had publicly passed away Mm. under the knee of a police officer in America. And I was just lamenting, learning how to lament and go, God, you know, how have we missed it? How have we 
you know, how, how many times have has someone reached out, um, even a homeless person or someone, and either we haven't been ready because we don't have money on us or we've just ignored or we've just looked the other way. And so um, it kind of just came out of that, like, sorry to grieve you, God. And the last line of that one, it's, you know, it's like, I just want to thank you, God. I just want to praise you, God. But then the last one, um, with many other words in between, it says, I just want to please God. And so, yeah, it's um, what I would love for people to get would more than me, that they would just hear the Lord and that they, the right song would, um, sit with them in whatever season that they're in and and um I wrote 14 of them with yeah (laughs) so hopefully one of them will be that encouragement for people yeah at least one I think we're gonna need the tissues for this record (laughs) I can just I can just tell but say I mean I know we're running out of time here so I want to ask you quickly a question that I ask all of our guests and it's it's simply what does it mean to you to live an undistracted life because on this podcast we talk about pursuing your purpose pursuing your passion getting rid of the stuff that can distract us from that what would that look like for you to be truly undistracted in pursuit of those things yes it would mean looking to Jesus and looking for Jesus Because if I'm looking to Jesus, just like that beautiful song, turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and his grace. And um, in a world that we are completely being bombarded more so than ever because of carrying around a literal computer in front of our faces, being able to be so contactable and also so distracted. And, you know, John Mark Comer talks about in his book, um, the ruthless elimination of hurry that goldfish have an attention span that is longer and larger than ours at this current moment because of the way that we are choosing to let things you know distract us and everything else and so um i would say look to jesus but then also look for him you know look for where heaven's breaking through um look for look for Jesus in the eyes of others. Um, you know, I, I was talking about that, that last song that I have on the album and it kind of made me just, you know, through the, the rumblings of what does this look like, God, how can we please you? Um, you know, in scripture, it talks about he's going to separate at the end, the goats from the sheep, and it's going to be the sheep are the ones that, you know, he says, you know, when I was in prison, you visited me. And when I was hungry, you fed me. And when I was thirsty, you gave me drink. And they say, Lord, when did we, when did we do that? He say, well, when you did it for the least of these, you did it for me. Mm. So like looking for Jesus, looking for opportunities where we can be his hands and his feet. And then also just to have the presence of mind of stealing our hearts, you know, turning off the TV and perhaps, you know, I mean, the Lord gave us the Sabbath one day a week for a reason and mm. if he's and it said jesus you know sorry it said god rested on that day you know in genesis so if god is doing it and he's doing it as like an example to us then we should be doing it yeah but it's like taking those moments to just what is the quiet still voice of the lord saying and and look mm. for him and and make space for him because if we're looking at him and looking for him You know, it also says in the Bible, I love it, it says those who seek me and seek me with all their heart, they're going to find me. You know, he's not hiding. Mm. I think he's just waiting. And and he's someone that deserves our full attention. Mm. It's Uh, so good, Taya. (laughs) So good. It's so good. I'm like, yes, taking notes. (laughs) But thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for chatting with me. Congratulations on the album. And we just wish you all the best with the release. You're very kind, Laura. It's so lovely to talk to you. Thank you for having me.